Um, thanks for making the time to attend. Um, the weather's pretty shitty out there, so it sounds the same in, in the UK where John and Adrian are, so we're all in in, in, in a common environment. Um, just, just by way of background, John got his BSc honours at a university called Marty's, so we're seeing a bit of um, normalisation here, but he did then go and do a part-time MSc at UCT under John Rogers, and as he says here, yeah, that that was to prove that the Boracian, the Boracian could do the English thing. Um, he then also did, did an MBA at a US business school, and then he had um, good experience with Sucor, then Namcor and Vintuk, um, Sastel Petroleum in, in Johannesburg, Petro South Africa. So he's done all the, the South African parasitals, and then interestingly, the new African Global Energy Group, um, which has got offices in London and Johannesburg. He's currently a senior geoscientist with uh, Geotech, the Geotech Group in, in Leeds in the UK. So that's where he's, he's currently based. And I think he's been in Wales through the lockdown period. Anyway, Jean, welcome to the show. And we look forward to hearing about how you reconnect um, Southern South America and Southern Africa to find oil and gas. Thank you. Right. Um, I know you can hear me. Can you see my screen yet? Yes. Have, All have, you, got, have, have you got the first screen up? Yes, yes. it's up. Okay, yeah. right, guys. So um, thank you for this. And um, I'm, I've just briefly looked at the audience. I see one of my ex-old bosses, Joe Keenan. Uh, we were together, colleagues at Sukor. Good to see you, Joe. And, and I'm sure there's a other couple of pet petroleum geologists around as well. Uh, but the talk is really slanted more so towards uh, a general talk than then focusing on, on the petroleum geology aspect, of which I'll do a few slides. So in short, how to find oil and gas by tying South Africa and, and the Argentina geology. And uh, the purpose of the talk is to um, provide some insight into specifically these two areas, uh, the conjugate margin, and I believe both areas, specifically the Argent Argentinian side, very unexplored. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just briefly introduce petroleum geology. Uh, I'll take you through the data that, that we've used and then a little a more detail on the conjugate basins. We've, we've got a run a plate model, which I'll do. And, uh, and then I'll take some time on the uh, model profiles. That's grav, mag, and uh, geology profiles and sections. And then being in the oil business, uh, if it's not source, you know, you might as well go wine farming or, or platinum mining or whatever. So source rocks, that's what really excites us. And then it's, it's got to tie with the basin model. Um, it's not only good, good enough to have the source, you've, you've, you've also got to cook this stuff and, and get it moving and then trap it. So I'll, I'll, I'll briefly chat on that. And then what do excites me is stepping back into paleogeology and drainage, which GTEC, the company I work for, um, is quite good at. And then we cannot leave the area without looking at recent discoveries, specifically Pada Fisi, um, Brill Pada, and then the upcoming um, Yachle Perth and some other areas. Right, petroleum geology, you've got to start with the source, as I said. And in this case, um, um, an example of the Kimmerich Shale, and uh, you've, source rock either contains algae matter or humic, so it's either marine organisms or plant material or a mix. And in the good world, you've got to at least have a total organic carbon content of more than 2%, and that's seen as a good source. And then these things, that's got to be buried to the right temperatures and there you can see an oil window a wet gas window and a dry gas window then uh, it's no good just to, to cook it which you can in in my little sketch see the windows and the oil you've you've got to move it along and uh, there is um, um, initial migration uh, that's primary migration and then secondary migration along a pathway into a trap um, and that trap is made of a of reservoir, and that's that could be um, sedimentary rocks like this. It could be carbonate. Um, um, it could be fractured basement. 
and then the key here is you've got to have sufficient porosity and permeability. So um, in the case of oil, anything between 10 and 20 should do it and above. And permeability, that is interconnection between pore spaces. Uh, that's got to be um, larger than in the case for gas. You can squeeze gas through tighter holes and gaps. And, and, and you can also live with a tighter reservoir for gas. And you've, you, you've got to trap these things. Uh, otherwise, they just go up and they go nowhere. And in the case of, uh, of different trapping styles, just some examples, uh, classic structural traps, could uh, just an anticline, so that's just a dome or a fault. And um, the, uh, um, the traps that I really fell in love with is the stratigraphic traps because it also a little bit more out of a, a geologist and a sedimentologist to come to answers where you would deal with not only a cap, a seal cap, but also a, a, a toe uh, and, and a change of facies uh, in that case. So the seal rock, uh, it's normally um, a shale, but it could be an, an anhydrite or a salt cap. Um, and then when you're dealing with faults, you could have a fault smear or gouge. Um, let's not dwell on this, but you've got to put those five components together, trap, source, migration, reservoir, trap, and seal. And there again, the two components, that's a stratigraphic trap, and that is the structural trap. And once it gets filled, again, primary migration, secondary migration. Right, quick background to the talk. Um, like I started off vast areas of offshore Southern Africa, Namibia, and the con conjugant uh, Argentine, uh, Uruguay margins is sparsely explored. And I would rank large portions of them as frontier. Um, there's similarities and differences. Um, what I'll show you here is uh, uh, the GTEC um, um, gravity, global gravity map, of uh, which we'll step into a little later soon. A, a, a couple of reasons for this talk is uh, I was involved with two regional studies. The one is the first one, Framework and Hydrocarbon Prospectivity of Southern Africa. So uh, we, we got a lot of NAMCO and <coughs> the petroleum, petroleum agency material. And uh, out of that, uh, there's a project, you'll see some examples. And then a uh, couple of years ago, there was a, an uh, oil and gas licensing round in Argentina. And we were over there and we uh, assisted them with uh, the tectonic evolution and the source rock assessment of the Argentine offshore. Um, so I'll look at some workflows and some outcomes both of these supports. And then, well, this talk was in a way given in, in, in slightly a different format, but most of the content is same at the Geological Society of London last, last year in uh, March. Uh, they had a conference uh, with invited speakers, hydrocarbons through space and time. And the same talk was then called Integrated Data to Unravel the Petroleum Potential of the Southern Atlantic Conjugate Margin. And uh, we were in the same lecture room where Charles Darwin uh, was doing his, uh, his lectures. So it was, it was quite a exciting uh, for me. Right, data. Uh, in the case of uh, GTEC, is, um, um, we look at regional scale, we go to basin scales, and then uh, we link uh, tectonics and stratigraphy and then focus on hydrocarbon. And uh, the petroleum system, mostly in, 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 in these uh, frontier, uh, southern Atlantic basins, this is on both projects, we follow the same workflow. We, we, GTEC, we start with our gravity and magnetic data set. Based on that, we do structural interpretations. We link the geological framework together. Uh, the structural architect is very important for us because what you put underneath a basin um, also tells you what you might cook or what, uh, or if you overcook an area and the whole um, development of, of, of that basin is, is then uh, related to the plate model setting, which I'll show you an example of. Um, stepping, stepping into our own in-house modeling, we'll do paleogeographic mapping, Danish analysis, landscape analysis, paleoclimate analysis, and, and these pretty much tie back to source and source rocks, as well as uh, 
if you wash sediment off land um, and you um, deposit it as reservoirs, um, as are you dealing with a good provenance uh, or are you going to fill your pores with a lot of clay? So that's um, that that ties together. And that brings us into our tectonostrat models. And then lastly, uh, the petroleum system. Um, we, GTEC, um, houses the largest graph. That's an example on the left. And, 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 and MAG set um, globally. And in this case, stepping out from those two data sets, our crustal structures, and then just an example of which we'll later keep time um, spend time on is again the volcanic nature of uh, uh, the southern African margin there. Um, right, just a word on where our graph comes from. Uh, we subscribe to six satellites and you can see from the start um, some of them um, no longer happening uh, but uh, uh, the last four up and running so and make use there's a specialized team within GTEC, a team of three people, um, all geophysicists and modelers uh, that use the radar, radar uh, altimeters from these uh, satellites to measure the height of the sea surface because the sea surface is influenced with what lies underneath it in the sense by millimeters or so and, and, and based on that free air gravity is calculated. Don't ask me more because I don't know anymore. I just love the data that comes out. It's, uh, it's accurate, reliable, and um, it, it covers all of the globe, offshore, uh, onshore less so. Uh, uh, in, in the case uh, of on, onshore, we, we rely on, on, on propriety data, data sets. Um, just on the resolution of, of, of it, we're currently down at a one by one grid, uh, which is quite comparable, as I said, to Shabon solutions. Where we uh, get Shabon, which I'll show you examples further on, like from the Petroleum Agency, we build that into our data set. Um, and this is all tied with um, airborne uh, graph and Shabon uh, mag data as well. Right. Um, the data set that I used in, in this study of mine, uh, just in short, um, that's the offshore basins in the study from um, the southern Natal round to the Wallfish number of lines and all in all I had about 12,000 kilometers of seismic um, that's exciting to put that on workstation and you do the regional work and you tie it to wells so again the wells are the are the yellow bright spots in the offshore so plenty of wells really focused around the Otaniqua uh, off the west coast and then the Namibian wells uh, linked link to that was the onshore appetite fission uh, Myself and Paul Green, we did some work there, and um, we did uh, some, and 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 you know, there's uh, plenty of other good work on 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 AFTA by people looking at uh, the whole evolution of the southern continent. Then, what what is shown here in the 2D profiles or these offshore links on and offshore is our model profiles which we'll come back into detail just soon. But just, let's just take a short break again and just remind ourselves where we are before we go into, in, into specific the area. And uh, I always find this is a good way to link um, the tip of South America to um, 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 our neck of the woods. And that's uh, um, the Permian Gondwana reconstruction with the Gondwanite origin in red. And there's the Cape Fold Bell and the uh, um, Sierra Aventana um, over there in uh, um, South America. Um, so the breakup we know started in the east and then it progressed to the west. Uh, Peyton, um, that's a guy that works here in Leeds, Leeds Uni. And uh, Doug, Douglas and myself have done a few things together in this case. Um, I was quite excited to look at how the Cape Fold Belt is tied together, together with the Sierra Ventana and specifically uh, um, how that, and this is pre, this is still Gondwana times, how it can be seen as going from the uh, Charis triple junction, not 
further north only, but branching off to the west and then links off with the, uh, Colorado and Sierra Ventana. But uh, you see three um, red lines across here. I'll show them in detail. You'll see the same image again, and I'll show you some profiles. And do they differ or do they contrast? One thing to, to just be aware of is that uh, the Cape Fold Belt and in, uh, in um, mid-late Jurassic times, uh, these structures were reactivated. You'll see it now on the plate model. And we formed our Sydney Rift Basins and Grabens, not only along the, um, uh, the Cape area, but even more so uh, over Colorado. And then later on, all of this gets overprinted by the Atlantic phase. That is when, when these two friends decided to divorce each other and South America drifted off Africa and we had the breakup. And there you are, 136 MA. Um, so let's look at the, uh, my plate model. That's a GTEC one. And let me just, uh, before I run it a couple of times, just position ourselves. So we're, we, we're going to look at the time frame. So that's uh, mid-Jurassic, uh, 180 million. And I'm going to run it to about 100, 100 million um, years. And you'll see South America disappearing off in the distance. But just focus, first of all, on or see the Gallus Falkland fracture zone. There is Falkland, as we put it, at that stage. I mean, remember, there's already been a separation uh, with the toe and the Falklands plateau uh, that's uh, um, getting uh, itself moving. And this is uh, uh, um, Ant Antarctica. And uh, we, later on, we'll look at the different individual basins. But let, let me just run it through for us. And, and look at two, two time frames. Um, the one is uh, when you see, we see the movement of these structures related with the, the, the Cape Fold Belt or the Cape, Cape Mountain Belt structures and the reactivation of those basin bounding faults. For instance, um, you know, the main, the Sundays River uh, forming the onshore um, Hamtuas Basin, as well as the Otsorn Basin over here. And then watch when we see the separation and Atlantic Ocean opening up. So there you are. Um, we've, we started it running. Um, uh, we've got an, an Antarctica and there you are, the toe of South America, so the Falklands. Uh, plate the Falklands and start getting itself ready. And there you are, there's the reactivation phase of the structures. And then at uh, the opening of the Atlantic. And that's pretty much where, where we stop it. Uh, I'll see if I can go back again to the start. And if, if I'm good enough, stop it just at two crucial, crucial points. There you are. That is pretty much um, reactivation of the Cape Fold Belt structures. And then wait for 140 um, when you see the first, there you are, movement, proper movement along the Gullis Falkland fracture zone and then the opening and uh, first oceanic crust. And then there, off you zoom. Um, so whatever's good, good, uh, from our side was probably ending up somewhere else um, with a conjugate as well. So that's that's pr pretty much the rest of my talk. We'll, we'll refer to this model, but at the conjugates. So quickly, uh, crustal types, and again, the conjugate types. Um, so the mobile, the cretonic crust and, 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 and the mobiles. Let me just see if I can uh, get us a, a pointer going yes so that's that's the ancient mobile crust the the, uh, the um, carbfold craton etc damara and cape fold belt on on the argentine side uh, Rio de la Plata, yeah, yeah. but what i really want to focus you on is our offshore basins and in the case of the orange and the cape basin and in the case we'll, later we'll talk about the colorado but look at um, the transform margin and the 
magma rich nature which is the red on both sides and then a magma poor nature down in the south so that is a crustal uh, types um, and both these margins look in a way similar but quite different as well um, again looking at the basins and the conjugates and here i've got a gtec depth to basement and and in this case likely you know big basement or yeah and light greens is about five k's and then when it goes into the blues light blues seven kilometers and then the um, dark blues is about as eight plus kilometers and you can really see some of these basins north falklands quite deep um and uh, the colorado we're not spending time on the santos and campos uh, off to the wallfish a very known deep basin there's deep there's karoo deep seated karoo and i'll show you a seismic line across there about the proof of karoo in the offshore um, there is the uh, rio de la, de la grande and the wolfers ridge cutting across and then again our neck of the woods the falkland the gullis with the otaniqua the cape sub basin the orange and 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 yeah adequate good um, sediment thickness in 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 the orange um right um two, two slides on volcanic and the volcanic nature of these two margins uh, and as i said we use potential field in this case gravity and this is the um, the um, south america gravity and magnetics and we did uh, um, quite an in-depth mapping of these volcanic provinces related to um, Argent, Argentine. So whether it is uh, uh, the basalts, the rhyolites, the lavas, but what really excited me and what, what I focused on was uh, the offshore, because immediately, you know, the, the thinking is volcanics in the offshore, no go for oil and gas. Uh -uh, you've got the story wrong. They can, they can be good, good friends. And uh, it's it's not all doom and gloom when you when you've got uh, in this case volcanics and basalts uh, uh, or volcanics in the offshore, and specifically in the offshore scenario, um, this is what's what's been referred to as these seaward dipping reflection packages, well understood and well mapped way back uh, when the North Sea opened the Norwegians. So that's the conjugate, and in the case of uh, Namibia, South Africa, and I show you um, how we've again mapped um, um, the basaltic material and the vol volcanics. But what I really quickly want to zoom in for us is if we look at the orange area, the orange basin area, and on the magnetics, you can definitely see where we've got proof of uh, the volcanic nature of, of the orange basin. Uh, with uh, um, with these seaward dipping reflectors in the further offshore and uh, um, the volcanic nature which is well known from from the kudu wells sitting down at a depth of uh, four four and a half uh, thousand meters right quite a contrast and it's shown on my little map here as well when you go from the orange to the cape sub basin and um, referred to by the cape fracture zone and uh, hardly um, any evidence of volcanic material um, seen over here versus to the north. Looking in, and, and this is just a, a little by the side, but uh, I got hold of this data and it really excited me. Um, a petroleum company on a DACO had this license off, off um, Cape Town and, and the data went back to the petroleum agency and GTEC combined it with our data set and we refined um, our, um, the fit, uh, um, the uh, Gondwana continental fit here. And what we also refined further was uh, these uh, um, ocean floor uh, crons. And in this case, you can see the M11 coming across and then being offset, not so much by the Cape, uh, but by this hope fracture zone so again there's cape point and there's the peninsula and, and a bit of a, a 
a kink associated with that, but clearly looking at the at the ocean floor uh, magnetics, that's M11, and then M3 coming up here with a, its offset heading off to the north, and again ages 136, 129. Right. Uh, three, four slides to bear with me because I need to introduce to you what what sits in a uh, model profile that's in the right and uh, as good as anyone is to show you the example um, that we've generated from the Karoo running across the fold belt, the Oatsorn Basin, um, the offshore Otaniqua, the southern uh, deep, deep water Otaniqua and the Ogullis Falklands. Um, so the main of this is we use magnetic and gravity and other data. But just get an appreciation, that is um, 40 kilometers. So we're really getting into the, in, into the continental transitional oceanic crust, as well as what excites me on the as a sedimentary basin. Um, there's the Gullis Falkland fracture zone out here. And then an interesting um, a marginal ridge feature in the middle of the southern Otaniqua. Right. That's a zoom in of the same. So there's my magnetic profile and my gravity profile. And what, what the geophysicists start off, off with is the observed data. You, we cannot see it, but trust me, it is all these little dots that hides behind the red. And in, in the case of graph, the blue. So they generate a calculated um, profile along that. And to make sure that it match the observed is make use of uh, crustal input, make use of depth below to mid crust, upper crust, lower crust, make use to depth to depth to base, basement, etc. And, and, and in the case we had well control and lots of uh, uh, public domain material to generate a profile as such. So just to uh, give you, uh, that's a seismic that drops in there, and that's a composite made of five or six lines from the Petroleum Agency with wells in there. Um, but what I want to lift out of this profile for us is um, the deep fill, that's the Sinrif section. So when I refer to Sinrif, I, I refer to Upper Jurassic Early Cretaceous sediments that sits in here bound by these basin um, uh, faults and forming these lovely half grabens, grabens. And these were those faults that were reactivated, um, as I showed earlier to you. Um, in uh, bright, in blue, is the drift um, unconformity, um, cutting, cutting above the surfaces. And then just above it is another blue, that is a main, a main a source rock interval. And that you're moving to the Perimian and you get into the Aptian. Anyway, um, that's that story. So again, from the Karoo over the Cape Fold Belt, there's the um, Oatshorn Basin. Then we go into the offshore. Again, let's just remind ourselves that's 10 kilometer over there uh, in depth. Um, that is the, the Pletmos Infanta. And then you move into the Southern Otaniqua, which has really got the attention of the whole world with the para and bro para. And then finally you step out over the transition and into oceanic. In this case, you just pick up a fault, a basin bounding, um, and that is very likely associated with that marginal reach, the Dias marginal reach. Right. Um, let's look at this at the same features, but I'm taking you to lookalikes or differences on the conjugate. And in this case, uh, that's the Colorado profile versus the Orange Basin profile. And again, that's what you saw earlier. So I've just put it on, uh, on the Gondwana uh, map. And just blatantly, um, the difference between the Colorado and, the, and call it the Atlantic drift, drift section, it's vast. In the case of the Colorado, the light um, colors, it is called it Sinrift. And the slightly, the, the bluer colors here, that is the Sinrift in the equivalent. What 
we mapped because we know that just above the sniff is the SDR units, the volcanic package that sits here. Um, there's a well control down, down there for us and there's well controls in the Colorado. But uh, you would have to agree with me if I put this match up and that's the same profile I really showed you and that's the one across the Southern Cape. Ah, there you are. Um, we see, uh, um, call it matching geology, sunroofed sun -roofed on both sides and uh, that uh, uh, that that's a, a quite an, a, a clear, good scenario to look at, as I see it. So, referring to um, now four different profiles, and this this again is the Colorado you've just seen, and uh, and the Orange Basin profile. And what I really want to contrast here for you guys is the contrast in geology. Uh, vast input of sands and sediment and and again it's to blame with uh, the location of the Colorado um, right proximal to the Sierra um, uh, Ventana and um, and the sediment in the Punta del Este as well as uh, lots of good uh, plastics coming in uh, coarse plastics in the case of the wallfish um, of Namibia and the orange, we get the sands, but definitely not uh, in, in the vast amounts. It could be detrimental to oil uh, and gas exploration as well. Right. Um, source rocks. I've got three slides on source. Um, and this is really just to show to you that, again, conjugate margins, we just looked at those two profiles. Four profiles so along uh, Argent the Argentinian side, wallfish, orange. And what I've highlighted in, in the green box, and, and this for you is proven sources on both sides. So proven in the sin rift, um, as well as uh, proven in the early drift, is, is uh, Beremian Aptian sources, in this case, uh, a, Valen a Valenginian source rock. But um, in the case of the Colorado, um, there's oil, although not being produced, but uh, oil uh, that has been sourced from specifically this source. Uh, then in, in, in red, I've got a couple of uh, potential source units, and they have now put them on their own right. And again, compare um, the um, west margin to the east margin of the southern Atlantic. We start off with um, the Karoo, with the Karoo rocks, and uh, even pre-Karoo rocks, and this is the Bockefeld equivalent, um, and in the case of uh, Uruguay, Brazil, and in northern Argent Argentine, and um, that shell gas territory, um, and then serious um, shell gas territory kicks in, um, when you relate to the White Hill, uh, not on, not so much on our side, but definitely on the on on the Argentinian side. So uh, the the Permian units. Um, we've I've spoken about these sources, but then uh, later um, there's also these uh, um, oceanic anoxic events. So this is source rocks that develop widely across the um, Atlantic. And, and there's a Cinemanian Turonian one known on both sides. And then there's a younger one um, on the uh, um, Punta Dante Else Colorado side. Right. Um, source, source has got to work itself into something that's called oil or gas. And I'm going to show you on my basin model a unit in the Sinrift a unit up here, and my Aptian source, and then the Tyronean source. So, uh, there you are. Uh, those not familiar with, uh, uh, this is a simple 1D basin model showing four source rocks. So these are uh, or five source rocks that I've got there. So what you see on the horizontal is time. And I take you from uh, the uh, Jurassic. So that's, there's 150, 150 million to present day. And uh, we start putting sediment in and we start filling, filling the basin. Um, the black units, that's the source units. And then 
as a breakthrough time, the source unit units are subject to um, cover, burial, and then uh, you start entering maturation windows and you start generating hydrocarbons, etc. Right, oil, oil is green. Um, so let's just quickly look at, uh, for instance, um, the Aptian source. It started entering um, the onset of oil in, in, in the late Cretaceous. It, it moved through mid oil and then oil um, still uh, in present day. And, and, and this is an orange, this is a, a well that was mo modeled off the deep water orange basin. It's still undrilled, it needs to be drilled. Right, just a quick one uh, on the Beremian or maybe even the Sinrift. You can see the Sinrift source went through gas, uh, the gas window, and that's a dry, a wet gas window and the dry gas window. And, and call it maybe that's that's the clue like. Um, a quick one on uh, um, reservoir, and in, 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 in again coming back to those two profiles I shared with you earlier, which is which is these um, lots of sand coming off uh, the uh, Colorado Paraná drainage area, and less or so sand from the uh, Orange system. And in this case, you can still see a proto-orange that yet hasn't captured um, the Vaal and all those other uh, rivers up, up in the interior. Um, a word quickly on petroleum systems, because my last few slides is going to focus on um, examples from these two margins. And so again, a petroleum system, we need mature source. We've got to migrate through a pathway into a seal where there's a good reservoir. But um, the way I'd like to summarize things for myself is I look at my, uh, this is called a petroleum systems uh, diagram or an, an analyst, uh, analysis. You look at your source, when it was in place. Um, you look at your reservoirs, two reservoirs, a Cretaceous tertiary reservoir, and these are capped by seal, younger seal rocks, and then taken by overburden. The overburden um, buries it for me, but I, I need to form traps during that phase, and I must make sure my traps is not in place too early, and the timing is good enough for seal, and then hydrocarbon charge, and then late, lately preservation. So all of these things has got to work nicely together. And I mean, what is more simple than than oil and gas geology. No, that's what it's a it's a massive team effort. Um, you rely on your geophysicist and you rely on 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 modelers and you rely on on your uh, um, petrochemical and your yes uh, your geochemist etc. But I'll be showing a couple of uh, fairways and plays. Just an example of uh, Ludwig's Basin seismic line uh, before going into the play. Uh, again, there's the Karoo, and there's the classic Sinrift sequence, and there's the um, early drift. Uh, so in this case, yellow is drift onset, drift infill, um, our Aptian, Aptian source rock in blue, and then uh, the potential Tyronean source up there with quite an exciting undrilled um, play. And that's that's referred to again in 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 oil terms, uh, this is a classic. It's turbidite sandstone reservoirs filled with oil that was sourced from this Aptian marine source, and it, it it got trapped in these late Cretaceous tertiary growth fault structures, and then it's it's sealed uh, by the tertiary marine shales. Right, that's that one. Okay. Um, we're going to the end, but first of all, we've just got to look at um, these conjugants, and again, uh, that's the Colorado at orange. I'll show you uh, more in, uh, in an outboard example, and I'll chat on deep water, ultra deep water areas. Again, to Lada Punta del Este, um, and then uh, the wallfish orange. And then we've got to come closer to home, okay, the Falklands, and if you if you drop the Falklands back to where it should belong originally was offshore here. So that's the Cape Sub Basin. And then lastly, um, I'll spend some time on the Otuniqua and the and that Brilpada discovery. Uh, we, we looked at these, uh, the contrast, but 
what is known from the orange basin in this area there's three proven oil accumulations there's the kudu gas um deep uh, down here there's the ibubizi gas up here and then there's also been an oil discovery the aj oil discovery so all the good stuff are here um and and in the case the colorado has been lacking um there, there's been shows but but no proper fields um so plenty of potential plays but both areas both colorado and orange remain undrilled in the deep water areas so poorly explored um just to show you that and these are the two deep water margins and the basins argentine basins south africa basins water depth of wells this is in the wallfish basin and this was the on the edge of the otaniqua so more or less in this position uh we had a, a, a well in a water depth of um, um uh 1700 meters that was moosehead in this case and then across on the otaniqua basin southern otaniqua that's the Brupara, with yeah, um, oil shows and gas shows in the case of the argentine side you can just see shallow wells on shelf one deep water well this is this is the deepest well ever drilled globally for the three three thousand four hundred meters um in the punta del est in of uh, uruguay in this case um, sadly dry and um, right coming back to uh our local world neck of the woods and uh, what really excites me and i've put the outline of this cape sub basin uh, over my um set uh, over my gravity data in blue it is shows deep um and so you can clearly see um there is at least three 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 and a half kilometers plus um of 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 depth uh, down there before basement um and let me just see this there's walker bay um and then what is known is on onshore just north of um cape Agulhas, between cape Agulhas and helen there's a well dwk1 and it's drilled in the onshore house fluctor basin i did work on that many 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 years ago in my Suko days and uh, what was known as upper jurassic source rocks you actually stand on these things you walk it you chip it um so there's a uh, portlandian source rock of uh, toc 15 18 percent that sits right on on our doorstep and then secondly there's this well ecb and there's some oil shows reco recorded from cuttings so something is waiting guys let me tell you um so if if you believe my um depositional environmental model and interpretation i can show you lacustrine grabens that's a darker green so that's that's where source potential source rocks and then a fluvial system um in the cape sub basin and again there you are hans bay over there the gullis there um do note the gullis um uh yes arch that separates between the otaniqua and and the cape basin and oh yes there's there's brilpada that new total well right um pre-drift pre-continental drift valenginian times north falkland basin and it proven 15 billion barrels of oil between rock hopper oil and and falkland oil and gas this is this is when drift has continued but um again a reconstruction um cape sub basin and the north falkland so let's go and explore that now i'm just going to finish off with brilpada and the statement total made significant gas condensate discovery brilpada this was uh, february last year it's uh, located 175 k's off south africa what a depth of uh, 1400 meters and it's the first well that's drilled in this uh, um, southern otaniqua um, it it's uh, aptian albion deep marine fan complex and it's in the parafusi fairway now again milan uh, i look back at um, pre 
Um, you know, re I, I reconstructed things, and my, my question just is: if 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 this basin sits over the uh, what sits on the um, 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 East Falkland uh, plateau? So, um, just zooming into this exciting new light uh, oil and gas condensate discovery, that is the fairway as it was identified in a three week a three D survey. And then you can see the different prospects and the further uh, targets to. Again, the Brilpada well, um, it intersected uh, uh, 34 meters of gas condensate up in, uh, in the upper reservoir and then a lower reservoir of 23 meters. And so that's, that's the uh, Albion and that's, uh, that's the Aptian one. Uh, it's, it's proven source. I mean, the hydrocarbons are there. Um, that's gamma, and, and in, in yellow is sands. Uh, porosity data, you can see that over there. Um, it really kicks up, and then hydrocarbon content, red is gas. Um, that's from resistivity and data, etc. Green is oil. In the case of the lower reservoir, it's a, it's a gas down too. They didn't um, go into water. Next, so that's broad powder. And, and the follow-up well to Brilpada is this well called Leipert. So this section takes you from all these frogs. Plat Anna, Brilpada, that's Plat Anna, Brilpada, with the two reservoirs. Vodboom, Leipert, the well due to be spud in September. And then finally, its follow-up would be Blas Oppo, Blas Oppi, um, in the sense. So, so that is um, that fairway. Right. Uh, it's, 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 it's got to have a resource in a commercial sense, these things. Um, and this is what I've picked up from Africa Energy web, website and Total. Um, so in the case of Brilpada, uh, a billion barrel oil equivalent in, in, in place. And in the case of the upcoming Leipert, and they expect it, they hope, hopeful to be um, more um, likely maybe oil, but still half a billion um, oil equivalent. The cost of that well is $150 million. Uh, let's not do the, the random out. But an interesting aspect out here is that you need a minimum commercial field side, size out here. The closest tie back um, is the FO gas discovery. That's 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers away on the shelf. Um, you would look at about the 350 million barrels recoverable, and that is at 60. The oil price today is 42. So you need to push it up to half a billion again. Right. Just to tell you there's other exciting things, and, and, and I'm taking you to Honekla Bay. And this is off the Orange Basin. Just two pictures of a discovery well by Sukor in 88, 1988. It floats some um, um, good quality API oil, and uh, it's it's now been covered by 3D seismic, and it's due to be followed up by an upflank um, well, and they believe that to be in the order of about 400, 400 million barrels because this is a proven oil, um, and there you can see the schematic. So. We from a lacustrine type of setting in these old fluvial, fluvial sands, fluvial reservoirs up there. Right, wells rushing our way soon is uh, um, Q3 of 2020, and uh, the Leopard well will be spotted by um, the deep uh, deep sea Stavanger um, semi sub. It'll be followed by uh, Blasop and and a third well. And then uh, late, uh, early next year, maybe that Gazania um, shallow water AJ follow up. Um, but that's not the only story along the West Coast. Um, along off Kudu, in, in, in ultra deep water, Total, I mean, that's the same guys that, that's doing paraphysy for us, has got the mass drill ship was ready. The Voyager was ready to have actually spudded that well in a water depth of uh, nearly three kilometers. And this is seen as absolutely uh, a basin opening deep water well. Um, that's the shallow water Gazania 
um, oil well uh, to follow up uh, early 2020. And then lastly, um, the whole South Coast gas program with the three Padafisi wells by the Deep Sea Stavanger. Last slide. Um, what should I say on this? I thought, guys, um, where Total and partners um, that's um, including Canadian natural resources and Qatar oil and gas and Africa Energy operates. It's where the Gullis current moves. And, and you can see this is measurements done while they were drilling uh, Brill Pada. Uh, current speeds, um, three meter per second, wind speeds, waves. And I mean, as the storm now moves through Cape, through the Cape today, over the weekend, um, uh, it'll just yeah, spike again. Um, so this this rig, it's a uh, it's a monster, um, you know. And you can see as as it sits there, how how the current brushes past it. It's it's got its own dynamically positioned thrusters and a propeller system, and then on top of that, it 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 stays in place by a dedicated anchor handling. In this case, a tuck boat. That keeps it there. So Total was pleased that that Brillpada was a world first. Um, they developed a lateral rise attention system. In short, it just keeps um, making sure that whatever your um, your drill pipe that goes down to the west ocean floor and deeper um, doesn't flex and doesn't snap uh, snap by the current. They had a, uh, a high frequency radar system. They actually had three of these radar radars deployed onshore um, for forecasting um, of the current and then okay the stuck but uh, last few comments i mean these are harsh met conditions and whatever need might be developed out here would be an enormous challenge and um, um, it's it it, it 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 will ask for new technologies and uh, it, it will be subsea i can't it being in see a floating system uh, and how how to hold something like that in position and how much energy, et cetera, et cetera. So lastly, um, I mean, I can just say plenty of discoveries and shows uh, on, in unexplored basins on most margins. Uh, we use multidisciplinary approach to find these systems for us. Uh, there's new hydrocarbon locations. I'm excited about um, the Cape Basin and Walker Bay deep water, so to say. There's no deep water wells drilled in our offshores, then we need wells. And let's just get them drilled. Guys, thank you. That's my story. What's awesome. there? Thanks, John. That was fantastic. All right, let's open up to some, some discussion. Any, are you going to manage the hand? John? Hello? Okay, this is John Bristow. Just, um, you know, having said all that, I mean, if, if, if Radapul is, is or, or Pada is interest, interesting and potentially could be developed in the long run, how many billions of dollars are you looking at? <laughs> I mean, just a round figure. A round figure. Um, that, I mean, a well cost 150 million, and yeah. they would probably at least go and drill um, your appraisal. Well, there's three appraisal well, wells now going down, so that's already half a billion just to appraise it. And and, and you haven't yet <clears throat> got down to your development wells. Um, so you're looking at a, I would say, a minimum of a, a one and a half to a couple of billion barrels, uh, sorry, dollars. To, oh, to develop. Yeah. However, if you are dealing with a billion barrel, like again, I'm showing on the field, uh, sorry, on, on, on the PowerPoint, a billion barrel for, for Brill Potter and, and half a billion barrel. And, uh, you know, yes, it's, it's definitely, it makes it commercial. Um, the, the, the challenge here, guys, is we are not dealing with black oil. We are, oh. dealing, we are dealing with gas and condensate. You have put sugar in. So, oh. so if that's the case, you've, you've probably got to get your gas and condensate via pipeline to, to FO and tie it back to the FA 
uh, and the mosque gas facility. That's just my view. It's me at the meeting. <laughs> but, but you, but you talk, you're talking huge numbers and you then need policy a policy environment to actually make it worthwhile. Exactly. That's got its own challenges coming as well. But yeah. uh, I mean, um, I was I was involved with with a license block just off on 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 the eastern side here with New Age. We had these. Uh, I was involved with these acreages, and I shot two a two D survey for them and a three D survey. Our three D survey was stopped by Greenpeace um, on the twentieth of December, twenty fourteen. Uh, I had to fly out from London and I had to go and make peace and 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 get our uh, our Polakas 3D vessel going again because of whales and and penguins. So uh, the oil industry uh, learns and knows how to work with the environmentalists. So that's that's the green guys. But then there's also uh, in the case of Pada Fisi and Brill Pada, it's all environmental. Uh, yeah. It's it's nature out there. It's tough. Yeah. Okay, Henny, are you going to control the hands? Let's have some questions and discussions. But thanks, that was great. It um, really puts the big picture together, and your diagrams and particularly your Gondwana breakup um, model is fantastic. We'll, we, we look forward to having you in Claymont so we can tap into some of these resources. Henny is it on? Yes, yes, I'm here. People are muted. They just need to put down their space bar or put their hands up, and then they can speak and ask questions. Okay, Cameron. We've got Cameron going there. Hey, John. Thanks uh, for that talk. It's very interesting. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, I see that you, Oaks, and look, I know that there's prob there is a hell of a lot of debate around uh, this, but I see you guys use a rigid plate model for. Uh, the Falklands and for Patagonia by large. Um, uh, I've got actually quite several questions about this. What is your evidence for that? Uh, uh, firstly, uh, yeah, uh, why aren't you a fan of, or why aren't you guys using the rotational model? That's the first question. So I want to see how you respond to this first. Um, there you are. There, there's the two models. I mean, uh, if you look, can you see the screen? Not yet. No. Um, just share screen again. Um, can can you do that for us, Henny? You have to share your own screen. Do I, uh, let me just let me just do that. Share screen. Um, have I got it? No, no not yet. Uh, not yet. Stop. Stop video. Okay. Huh. Okay. Screen there. You are. Uh, I I see it being green. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, because I, I, I would have loved to um, show you um, just how, let me just escape and try again. Um, share screen, share screen. There you are. Something's happened. Yeah, Zoom um, and uh, share screen. You cannot share while other participating is sharing. So, yeah. All right, we'll talk to it and the two of you can also... Well, Frank was sharing his screen. You can try again now, please. Try again now. Okay. There you are. You see it now? No. no. no okay. No. Never mind. Um, um, what I really wanted to share with you on, on the screen is this. There's a two scenarios showing exactly the Falkland Islands in the alternate position. Um, where it sits um, offshore, um, yep, um, Tonskay, pretty much, you know, versus, yeah, yeah. versus my model. And in short, Cameron, North Falkland Graben, it's, it, that's the position and, 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 and the least rotation. Uh, you swing it through and, and, and you get it by because you run into so much issues when you look at that whole West, Western Rift complex associated with Falklands and the West Malvinas, um, you, you must then be dealing with a, a very unique micro little spinning plate um, versus if I just leave it on, call it in the, in, in, in the, on the toe of so South America as part of the uh, Falklands uh, plateau, it just makes, it's, it's just a lot simpler for me. 
and it, it fits my story nicely with the Cape Sub Basin. So that's my answer. All right. No, because um, you probably are aware of the, the Falkland sound. Uh, you know, I know, there's some of these ideas where there's uh, with the, the Falkland sound between the east, east and west Falklands is that there's either a anticline that dips um, into that uh, into that the sound over there, and or there is a fault um, uh, in between the sound or uh, that runs through the, the Falkland sound. Because um, I was just wondering as well, because I've actually uh, been chatting a lot to Bob Thomas about this, and um, I haven't actually seen any of these alternate models, you know, if they show if there was, it has been any translation between East and West Falklands um, for starters. Uh, do you guys see any of that or do you guys have East and West Falklands, you know, chummies together through, through thick and thin or um, uh, recently put together? The, uh, I mean, the oil companies has given us drilling on both sides and, 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 um, both rock, well, not so much rock hopper, but um, Falkland Oil and Gas drilled not only North Falklands, but they also drilled on the Falkland Plateau, so to the east. And uh, specifically those basins, it's, dif it's different basins. And, 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 and it lacks um, the good stuff that the Falkland Graben has. So, yeah, okay. um, it's, it's, it's probably worth also just... Uh, visiting the oil company websites and, and, and see those contrasting. Um, I'm, I know Falkland Oil and Gas has, has got a couple of good papers on, on specifically the geology uh, of, of the eastern portion versus the western portion. All right. Uh, and then and, the north of uh, Again, Cameron, I'm an oil guy. I love the North Falklands. I see oil there, so <laughs> I, would, I would forever keep the positive <laughs> All right. going. <laughs> and keep then, the yeah, penultimate question. Um, the Gastre fault system, uh, the Rawson fault system, and the San Julian fault system. Which of those faults do you think is the equivalent of the Gallus Falklands uh, fracture zone? Uh, the reason being is, you know, this all comes into play now is if you have a rigid uh, Patagonia model versus a bunch of blocks that are moving past one another through time. Um, because, you know, I've been looking at this now from a detrital zircon point of view um, in the Cape supergroup and equivalents. And pretty much we are seeing, you know, um, uh, it's not the North Patagonian Massif, uh, news. Uh, the name will come back to me. It's, it's there by the San George um, uh, Gulf. But anywho, um, the, I know there's some debate as if the Gullis Falklands fracture zone continues up, uh, if it is equivalent of the uh, Gastre fault system or the San George or the Rawson fault system. What do you guys? What are you guys starting to see now? Um, my little understanding is these, the St. George and the St. Julian, they they are discrete, um, separate faults, and they've got their own, um, um, call it basins associated with them. What I suggest, Cameron, as yeah. my my plate, plate modeling guy, that's all Peter Webb does. He is our in-house plate modeler. Yeah. Um, Send me your email and I'll get you in touch with Peter Webb. And, and, and okay. Peter is really, um, he's, he's got a PhD in this thing as well, you know. So <laughs> he, All right. he, he always likes to progress and learn and, 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 and ex, you know, be in contact. So uh, get in contact with me and I'll get you and Peter Webb in touch. He's also in furlough in lockdown. So he's desperate to, uh, <laughs> to, All right. you know, to do something exciting. All right, Lacker. Like, uh, thanks very much. Perhaps uh, a chance where we can have a panel discussion, guys. You can yeah. set up something like that and we can uh, all participate and listen how you guys fight it out. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> we, good, good argument. And we want that um, vocabulary and glossary of um, Cameron's to really yeah. work here. Yeah. Can I get a donoring? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll clap them into place. Eh? Okay. <laughs> more, more questions. Anyone else out there? John Blaine has just said thank you very much. Uh, he looks forward to look, following this interesting development over the next few years. Sure. <clears throat>
So, so when, when are you expecting to sort of move back to the Cape, John? End of the year? Yeah, end of the year. Okay. I've, Good. I've got a house moving company to come and see me straight after this call. <laughs> okay. Right, I think, guys, if there's nothing more, then we're going to bring this to a close and uh, we this will be on. Oh, sorry, Cameron has 10 more questions. Let's go. Yeah, no, I mean, if there is time and if there is space and all this sort of stuff to ask. Uh, I saw you mention the Cordobes um, formation. Um, I've, I've started looking into this uh, now at the moment. I've got a... Um, I've got a brachiopod paper, biogeography paper that's coming out soon. And uh, I've seen this uh, Cordoba has, has got a lot of uh, um, faunistically a lot in common with the piranha to the uh, ventana and the, um, and the cave. Um, but also as well with all of these things uh, Argentinians are very, they very fuss with their data and information. So to actually find anything meaty um, about these things lithologically, to actually see how they could correlate right down, you know, within a sequence track model, is very they just buggers with this sort of stuff. Um, are you guys seeing this as well with the Cordobes being a piranha, like a southern equivalent of the piranha, or are you guys? You're breaking up the camera. Oh, sorry, I just uh, just with the Cordobes formation. Are, are you guys seeing this being more of an equivalent with the Piranha or an equivalent with the Ventana? Um, Can't you? Let me type it up. Cameron? Cameron, can you hear? Yeah. Got the back end of that now. Uh, okay. Carry on, John. No, no, no. It's a message now. Yeah, yeah. Cameron, no, 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 no. I mean, um, again, um, we've uh, we, we've also just been restricted quite by the Argentinians allowing us data. You know, they live in their own world with their own controls, and and we were really. Um, I was I was although I I worked on the on the on the Colorado. Um, and uh, uh, it was so much on the on the offshore. I just took note on what you mean. I'm worried about call it basement rock in a way. So <laughs> what what I suggest write this to me, and I'll be in touch with Peter Webb as well. And uh, and 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 we work together uh, on on this aspect. If that's okay for you, that's fine. Yep. Thank you. Benny, just my last question to John. John, we're talking about the orange basin, and obviously I'm coming at it yes. from a diamond point of view. Uh, how, how far offshore, to just to put it in perspective, how, how far offshore are you working in the orange basin, or do you track it all the way from the mouth? Um, the, I mean, that the, the AJ Graven, which is now where they're going to drill Gazania on. Yeah. Um, that's in a water depth of 100 and 150 meters of water. So okay. that immediately gives you an idea how far you get offshore. Um, mm. So definitely, um, totally out of, uh, I mean, in the oil industry, we talk about jack up territory where you don't have to float something, you go and you, you just put piles down and you just jack this thing up. So mm. it's, it's not jack up territory. And if you talk jack up, you talk about in the order of 30 meters and shallower. So um, oil, oil exploration, West Coast, and, and the wells that Sukor has drilled, because guys, can you believe it? The last well that was drilled in the Orange Basin was in 1990. Well, it was this well, 1993, 88, and then 1993. Um, so it, it, it desperately needs, needs wells, um, deep water wells. So uh, the Sukor wells were all within 100 meters or so and deeper. Uh, Joe, Joe Keenan, um, uh, that was in this talk, he, he, he would have also recalled water depths quite well on, uh, on, on Orange Basin wells there for us. But we yeah. stay off where the diamond guys are. So, 
Okay. No, it's just interesting, you know, those profiles, it's all your fish and track work would have been done to look at uplift, was it? So you're looking at the whole development of that margin. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, Paul Green and myself wrote wrote the fish and track paper in, 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 in Basin Mott. Uh, um, um, the, you know, the publication, we, 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 we actually got the prize for the best paper that was wrote, written in 2015. And we were tackling the issue of, you know, the uplift. But again, more coming. Uh, Paul wanted to keep oil and, oil and gas out of it and diamonds. So he's, he's doing it. We, we did a geomorphological evolution and, 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 and discussion um, using, using AFTA, not only onshore, but offshore AFTA as well. Fantastic. So anyway, Marty has taught you well. So we look forward to seeing that info. I'll get, your, get you to send me a copy on the email, and I'm sure Michael will be interested as well on that paper yes yes yeah no 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 okay. guys I, I just cannot wait to come home and let's let's go and walk some of these rocks Let, let's go into a house flutter and and stop at that at, at that i mean portlandians you, you i mean you you stand on port portlandian source rocks it's 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 an amazing suit of outcrops there um and uh, and and the and the other interesting thing there is you just move by a couple of kilometers and you stand on Bockefell and you can see the, the effect of the, of, of, of the Cape fold belt and, uh, uh, and the nature of folding and fracturing and how it destroyed the Bockefell. But here you're sitting with virgin, call it virgin shales, unaffected by the fold belt. It's, mm. ah, it's, it's, and, and then the other good thing, there's a wine farm. They, 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 <laughs> They dug trenches for us at one stage when I took a field trip past there. So, yeah. okay. So, so and you thank you, Bob. Bob has, Bob has got his hand up, John. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go for it. Jean, thanks very much. Very, very interesting. I don't know if I misheard you when you talked about water depths of the of the wells. Um, did you say 150 meters? Yes, oh, that's. But the diamond, the, the diamonds go out to that sort of depth. Absolutely. These guys are these guys are exploring out to that sort of depth. So, so we, we, we could be in a bit of competition, but 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 please remember, um, the the oil and gas guys we like to keep in a small little portion. <laughs> we would just yeah, yeah we, we don't move around. <laughs> where the where where the competition could come and and this was a, a key debate for us when when I was in Oranyaman uh, those years that Kudu was trying to get uh, the gas ashore was the pipeline um, was going to have to wind its way through the diamond deposits to get the gas ashore <laughs> and the potential of sterilizing a huge value of diamonds because of the because of the corridor that the pipeline would have to would have to follow. Uh, that was really the big debate. So there will there would be competition. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's there, there is this Gazania AJ um, discovery with oil. I see when 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 oil gets discovered, it will go straight into a floating facility. Yeah. And and no pipeline needed offshore. However, just further offshore to this is the Ibubizi gas field, and uh, and and. And that's a, a fraction of the size of Kudu, but it's always been a thinking that um, that uh, Ibubizi gas can go onshore and then down to Saldana, um, and and there you need pipes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, thanks very much. Um, uh, for John, if I can just say one more thing to John, I, I'm having lunch with Steve Goodlad in in a couple of hours, and he. Send my uh, Please he, send my he, good uh, regards to Steve. Yeah, he's busy. He's got a repatriation flight back to UK, uh, and he's busy packing. So he's sorry that he couldn't join us this morning. Fine, fine. No, no. I'm. I go back to the days of Mike Bremner as well. You know, when the Marine <laughs> Juice Science <laughs> Unit was up and running. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A bunch of rebel, yeah, thanks, huh? Jenny. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Henny. You, you're going to, you, you've got the sound clip, Henny. And John, are you happy to, if people want, you can PDF or use a PDF? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll put this on PDF for us. Yeah. No problem. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. And thanks very much again. We really appreciate your effort. Cheers, guys. Camera. And yes. keep Camera. the good work going. I love these presentations. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks to everyone and, you know, Henny's management and everyone's contributions. It makes it a lot of fun. Um, but it's a really great team effort. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah. all. Thanks, Adrian. Really good. Thanks, Cameron. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone else. Everybody. Good. And Bye. See you guys next week when we visit Alaska. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And, and just, just to Bye. reiterate, we're always looking for new ideas. So if people have got new ideas, we do want to have the odd discussion group as well, you know, much like we've just had. So we're going to find a few topics to really debate and get excited about as well. And, and I see Ed's still on board. Ed, we want some of your ideas. Huh? <laughs> okay. Cheers, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.